Hey friend, John McLennan here. And in this video, we're gonna do something just a little bit different. I'm gonna share with you how to play every single song from the classic Beatles album, Abbey Road on guitar. Now this album is brilliant and there is so much we can learn from diving into these classic songs and classic guitar parts. So I wanted to share this with you and I hope that you get a ton of value out of these lessons. We're gonna go in chronological order, so without further ado, let's break down the first track. Let's break down how to play Come Together by the Beatles on guitar. We're gonna start off with the intro section. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. This is an awesome riff that uses a double stop and a power chord with a little hammer on as well in there. We're going to play a D5 power chord. So you put your first finger up here on the 10th fret of the E string and then third finger on the 12th fret of the A string. So you got those two notes. We're going to do two down strums, one and, and then we're going to play a hammer on from the 10th fret to the 12th fret on the 5th string. So. Then you use your first finger to get this double stop. This is going to cover two strings. We're going to play the 10th fret on the 4th and 3rd string. Now the idea is to do this hammer on, let that note ring out, and then add the double stop. And it ends up creating like a D minor seven kind of chord, which is the basic chord that's the underlying chord here. So that goes four times for the intro. Let's try it together. One, two, three, Four. Then we move into the verse, which is where John Lennon's vocal comes in and he starts singing the melody. And for the verse, we're going to actually use this really cool blues rhythm pattern that sounds like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and... So I'm playing there, again, based off of that D5 power chord. I'm playing one, and with a palm mute. So I'm palm muting that chord, one, and. and. Then on beat two, I'm reaching that pinky up, right? A little pinky action there up to the 14th fret on the fifth string. So it's two here without the pinky and then two with the pinky on. One, and two, and three, and just alternating. We're gonna play this for four bars. So we've got eight notes here. I'll, I'll play four bars of it for you. Three and four and. Here come old flat top, he come. Then after that fourth bar, we're gonna shift down. We'll keep our fingers on the same strings. Just move it down to the fifth fret. We're gonna now play the same riff based off of the note A. Here we're gonna go. This time half the length of what we did on the D. 
So we'll play two bars of it. One and two and three and four and two and two and three and four and then G5. Now here we're just gonna hit the third fret. So we shift the chord down to the third fret, hit it once, let it ring out. One, two, three, four, two, two, back to the intro. again. Then we go to the chorus. So let me show you what I played there for the chorus. We're gonna play just a, a little quick chord progression here. It's like two bars long. I go to a B5, and I like playing it here on the second fret of the fifth string. So two and then four on the fourth string. And I'm gonna play eighth notes, all down strums. I'm not palm muting here though. I lift up the palm muting and I go one and two and three and. Then on the fourth beat, four and, I take off that first finger and I get like, here's a B5 and then it's over A. So I put that A in the bass, just for one beat. See that? One and two and three and four and. Then I go to G, up to A. So for G here, I'm playing the third fret and the fifth fret, but on the sixth string. We'll do one and two, and then on beat three, we hit that A and then we rest. So this whole two bar little refrain here, or chorus, goes like this. So the only other sections we would need to talk about are the keyboard solo, right? And that's where you hear this. And for that section, we, we play the verse, but there's a slight variation. It goes like this. So the variation that I played there was I didn't go down to the G where we, we normally have that da, 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 da. we normally do that in the verse, but when the piano solo is happening, we just stay on the A. And there's a lead guitar. You know, playing that over the ba, ba, da, da. Ba, 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 da, da. back to the intro. Then finally, when we end the tune, we just stay on D. And we just vamp out. Have fun practicing Come Together by the Beatles. As usual, I would recommend you going and playing it along with the recording. This song has a really kind of greasy, funky feel to it. And so you want to play this rhythm part right along with the recording to help you get that groove down. Before you go, don't forget to download my free book, Melodic Expressions, and get the Blues Training Series. Again, these videos are not on YouTube. They come with tabs, and they're going to show you some great blues guitar lessons completely for free. So check that out at the link below. As always, leave any comments for song requests. Thanks for watching, and until next time.
How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number two of the Abbey Road series. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to play something by the Beatles on guitar. If this is the first lesson in this series you've seen, I'm posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album, Abbey Road. There's some incredible songs on here and some fantastic guitar playing that I'm going to break down for you step by step. But before we get into it, I really appreciate you checking out the links below. If you're interested in learning more about guitar, I've got a lot of great resources for you on my website, johnmclennan.com, as well as a free book that you can download and some free blues training videos that are not on YouTube that come with tabs and some other great bonuses. So just check that out at the link below. And with that said, let's dive into today's lesson. Let's break down how to play something on guitar by the Beatles. Now we've got this intro, the drums do this fill, and then there's a one bar intro, the chords go like this. And on top of that, there's this guitar line that goes. And that's just a little bend here. We're gonna start on the 10th fret second string, and then do a little half step bend to a pull off. So you bend the note up actually before you pluck it. And then you release down to that pull off, and then you play 11, 12, 13. So that's sort of the lead part on top. And then right there you're on the verse. Chord-wise, I was playing an F, which most people play like this, you know, I just use this thumb chord, to an E flat, which I like this shape here, six, five, three, four, three, starting on the fifth string. And then I go to a G, but the D's in the bass, so you get this like, kind of bass line. And that's the same as this F chord, just up here, and I, I'm not using the thumb on this one. That's why it's a G with the D in the bass. And then you go to C. And here we're at the verse. For the verse, we're gonna play this. there like the intro and go back to the second verse. So here's what I played. I played a C chord to a C major 7 and you just lift off that first finger. Then you add the pinky to the third fret of the third string and then you go to F. So that's the first four bars. So each chord lasts one bar. One, two, three, four, switch. Add the pinky, F. And then I like doing these little bass notes. And that's just walking down the third fret here, the fourth string, playing F, E, D. Then I'm going to a D7 chord here. And that's just open two, one, two from the fourth string down. Then we do a little climb. You know, this is a G to an A minor seven to a G over B. Then we do a walk down, a little minor cliche chord progression. We go A minor to A minor major seven. And that's open fifth string. Two, one, one, open. Then A minor seven, which is like a C chord without that third finger. And then D seven again. So what's happening with that minor cliche chord progression is 
because that note's going down through the chord, but the rest of the chord's staying the same. So A minor, A minor major 7, A minor 7, and then we finish with D7. Then we go to that intro progression again, you know, you can either play, you know, and go back to the lead, or you can play, and you're back to the verse again. So here's that whole section. I'll start with the intro. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Everything repeats again for verse two. Now, when we play through the repeat, we're gonna go like this. This time we're gonna go to an A chord instead of a C. And we actually change keys to go to the B section. So that goes like this. What I played here is I went to an A, so we did that intro figure, F, E flat, G over D, then A. So if I'm playing the lick, sometimes I go like this. And I just play an A triad up there. Because you don't want to go, you don't want to go to that note. You gotta go to the C sharp there. So here you're going to an A chord, and you play two bars of A. One, two, and a three. Then we're at the, the bridge melody there. So this is all about a descending bass line. So we're going to keep an A here. I use one finger, and we're going to walk the bass down. It's going to go A, G sharp, F sharp, E. Two beats each like this. One, switch, switch, switch. How cool is that, right? So I just play actually a bass note, strum, da, da, bass note, strum, bass note, strum. Then D, G, then we play an A chord for a bar, but the strings do this chromatic walk down like da, 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 da. So sometimes I'll do that in octaves, right? A la Wes Montgomery, or I might just play a bass line. So that would just be A, every note down to E. A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E, A chord. Da, 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 da. Then D, G. This time, we go to C. So instead of doing the chromatic walk down from A, the second time we're going to play a C chord, and we're going to do what's called a diatonic walk down. So we're going to walk down the notes of a C major scale like this. And that's gonna be C, B, A, G, F, E. And we're back to the verse. Then when we end the song, I'll show you how we end. does a fake out, we go to A, like it's going to the bridge, but then we do the intro again. Da, 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 da. And on C. 
Have fun practicing something by the Beatles on guitar. I hope you got some value out of today's video. Don't forget to download my free book all about soloing. And as always, leave any song requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number three of the Abbey Road series. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to play Maxwell Silver Hammer by the Beatles on guitar. If this is the first video in this series you've seen, I'm posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album Abbey Road. I have also already done Rubber Soul, so you can check that out on YouTube. But today's video, we're going to break down this classic Beatles song. It's in the key of D, and I'm going to show you each section, so when you're done with this lesson, you'll be able to play right along with the original recording. But before we get started, I want to hook you up with something right away. I've got a free book all about soloing that you can get at the first link down below. And with this book, you'll also get some blues training videos that are not on YouTube that come with tabs. It's just some exclusive content I wanted to hook you up with. So check that out at the first link down below. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Maxwell's Silver Hammer by the Beatles on guitar. Now, I've taken this piano part and it has what we call like a descending bass line. So the bass line keeps moving down through the scale and it does some walk downs and some walk ups. So here's what the first part sounds like. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So this is the first eight bars here of the verse, and we're gonna start on a D chord. And I actually play a D5 a lot of the time, so that'll just be the open fourth string, then the second fret, and then the third fret. And that leaves me a little bit of room to be able to reach up and do this descending bass line. So this is a D5, and then we're gonna add this C sharp in the bass, which is the fourth fret of the fifth string. So. Da, 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 So here we're going to the B7 after that. So D over, and then over C sharp, then B7. And what you'll notice I'm doing on, on a lot of the chords is alternating the bass. So I'll have the B in the bass here for the B7, and then I'll move the F sharp. I'll move to the F sharp there with that second finger. So you get this little... Kind of bass line that's alternating. So we've got D, then over C sharp, B7, E minor, walk down. So you could just stay on E minor or you could do these bass walk downs which sound pretty cool. We're gonna play E, this is the second fret here on the fourth string, then open, then C sharp on the fourth fret of the A string, B on the second fret of the A string. Da, 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 da. We're just walking down the scale to the A chord. So. Now when we get to the A here, we're gonna alternate the bass. So I'm playing fifth string, fourth string, 
fifth string, fourth string with a strum in between. Then D, walk down, A, walk up. So there's a lot of walk downs. D, C sharp, B, A. B, C sharp, D. So that's just literally like a roundabout through the notes of a D scale, basically. So D, walk down to A, walk back up to the top. Da, 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 da. second time when we go through this we're going to play the A chord and we're not going to do the walk back up to the D because we're going to go to the next part that sounds like this. And then we're into the chorus, you know, bang bang Maxwell silver hammer. So for the A there, I just stayed on the A, I alternated the bass, so instead of doing the walk up, then I went to an E7. We're going to let that ring for two bars. A one, two, three, four, a two, two, three, four, then A. Sometimes you can play an A7. The A and the A7 can kind of be interchangeable in this song. So if you want a little bit more tension, play the A7 or just the straight A. One, two, three, four, a one. There's our walk up again. So that was the second fret on the fourth string, then open fifth string, two, four, and we're into the chorus. So here is the whole first A section, basically, before the chorus. One, two, three, four. chorus and the chorus is just a little bit more of a straight ahead chord progression we're going to use a D an E7 an A and uh, that'll get us through the first six bars but we're going to keep that bass alternating so here's what the chorus sounds like the first eight bars a one two three four So here we go, D for two bars, then E7, and notice I'm alternating the bass, sixth string, fifth string, then A, again alternating, fifth string, fourth string, or fifth string, sixth string, it's the same note there, E here, or E here, and then we're going to do a quick E minor, A, D, A, D. So that's E minor, A, just bass strum, bass strum. And then when I get to the D, I'll strum the D, just play the single bass note A, and then hit the D chord and rest like this. Then we go into this progression. This is a really cool little interlude section. Four bars long, we're gonna play D, to F sharp over C sharp. So it looks like an F chord, but I'm gonna play from five down, from the fifth string down. Then B minor, D7 over A. So this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then G for a bar, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four. Then we're back to the top.
the second time here, we go E minor, A, then guitar solo. Same as the first part of the chorus for the guitar solo. back to the top we repeat everything again and when we end the song we end with have fun practicing Maxwell's silver hammer be sure to practice this along with the recording that'll help you get the feel and the timing of the entire song before you go don't forget to download my free book all about soloing and get the blues training I think it's really gonna help you out if you got some value out of today's video as always leave any song requests in the comments below thanks for watching and until next time <laughs>
So that gives me the feel. So we're gonna go A to E. F sharp minor seven. D. Then here we're gonna play B minor seven to E, B minor seven to, well I'm playing an E seven really. So the B minor seven is the same as that F sharp minor seven, just up here. And then E seven, which is open, seven, six, seven, five. Looks like your C chord, but you just add your pinky. So we're gonna count one, two, switch, two, one, two, switch to then we have this standard walk up you know you hear this like now of course you could just play that bass line that's a cool part to play then back to that e augmented chord which is really just seven six five five there or I might put chords with it like this and then you're back to the melody So now we're going on to the next section, the B section. So instead of going which turns us back around to the A, uh, back at the top, oh darling, we're going to go A, then to D, then to A, then A7. This is a good voicing here, we're just playing from 5 down, open five, six, five, five. Looks like your A7 like this, I just have an open string in there. It's just kind of a smaller version of it. Then we've got, when you told me. So here's the B section here. I'm playing a D chord. Five, seven, seven, seven. Up to F7, which looks like, again, your C7 chord or your E7 here. We just bring it up to where the root's on the note F. And then to A. And then A7. So each one of those chords lasts one bar, so one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, four, five, six, F7. And I'm arpeggiating the chords, so like I'm just picking through the strings. That's a cool sound that you hear on the recording, you know, like. That's, you know, very similar to the guitar part that George is playing. But again, if I'm playing an accompaniment pattern, I'm probably not just gonna go like and play a part that sounds like it needs to be with the band, you know? So I'll just hit the chord and play it like that. Then I'll play B, which is like your A, right? Just two frets higher. Two bars. 
then E7, F7, E7, E augmented. So that, that could be just, you know. And there's a little break in there, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Then we're back to the first section. Have fun practicing Oh Darlin' by the Beatles. Make sure to check out all the other Beatles lessons that I have on the channel. I've done the entire Rubber Soul album, and if this is the first video in this series you've seen, I'm doing the entire Abbey Road album as well. Don't forget to download your free copy of my book, Melodic Expressions, and along with that book, you'll also get a free blues training series that comes with tabs and some really great videos that are not on YouTube. You can check it all out completely for free. As always, leave any song requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to play this classic George Harrison intro lead to Octopus's Garden by the Beatles on guitar. Now this video is a part two to the full song lesson that I did in the Abbey Road series. So you can check out that video if you missed it and you want to learn the chord progression but today's video is all about this iconic lead part. Now we're going to use some slides and some hammer-ons and some pull-offs to put this lick together, and I'm gonna break it all down for you bar by bar. But before we get into the video, I really appreciate you checking out the links below. I've got a free book all about soloing, so if you're interested in improving your guitar skills for soloing over major and minor chords, this book has over a hundred licks and exercises in it. And with that book, you'll also get a free blues training series with tabs and some videos that are not on YouTube. So check that out at the first link below. And with that said, let's break it down. Let's break down the classic lead part here to Octopus's Garden by the Beatles on guitar. I'm gonna play it for you first and then I'll break it down. Here we go. One, two, three, four. This is a great example of how you can use a major pentatonic scale to come up with some really cool lines. So this is based off of your E major pentatonic scale. And we're using primarily two patterns here. This pattern here, and then of course, the root position pattern here based off your E major shape. Now you'll notice how George is using slides to get from one position to another. So we're gonna start on the ninth fret of the fourth string and the first lick goes like this. We're gonna start in that pentatonic pattern with a hammer on, nine to 11. Then we'll do the same thing on the next string down, nine, 11, but we'll continue with a slide, so. All those notes you get with two plucks, so. This is one thing about slides and hammer-ons and pull-offs, is they can make your playing sound a lot faster than having to pick every single note. So you pick once here, then pick once here. And then, again, hammer pull-off now from 12 to 14 back to 12 on that second string. Now we're gonna slide from 13 back down to 11, and that's on the third string, then nine, then bend 11. So. And then when you do that bend, 
you band up and then you just kind of choke it out. So that's the first lick. Then the second lick starts the same way but has a little variation. So we bring in some thirds here, which is a really nice sound. We're going to hammer from 9 to 11 on the fourth string, then go to the third string, again, hammer, slide. This time we're going to skip up to the first string and hit that high E on the 12th fret. Then we'll do a pull off from 14 to 12 on the second string. Then we'll slide from 13 down to 11, and then play 9. And then we're going to walk up with thirds here. So this is going to be the 11th fret of the third string and the 10th fret on the second string. And we'll walk up. walking into the notes of an E triad here, which is what we learned in the chord version. You know, the band's playing an E there, so. So the first lick. Second lick. Then we'll finish the lick with this. So we walk down the scale and we get down actually into this seventh position pattern. Which would be your E major pentatonic there. So we're up here on the thirds and we do 14 on the second string. So walking up. So that's 14, then 13 on the third string, slide down. 9, 9. Then we do this classic Beatles move that you hear in tunes like Let It Be as well. Right? That's like in the Let It Be solo. So that's pulling off 11 to 9, then on the fourth string, same thing. Then slide 11 to 9 on the fifth string, and then 7, 7. And then. 9, 7, 7, so 9 on the 5th string, 7, 7. So all together. You can play an E bar chord there. So again, we're starting right on that downbeat. One, two, three, four. Have fun practicing Octopus's Garden on guitar. Don't forget to download my free book all about soloing. If you enjoyed this lesson and you just want to improve your lead playing and learn about the scales and things that go together like what we talked about in today's video that go with the chords, this book is really going to help you out with that. As always, leave any song requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number six of the Abbey Road series. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to play I Want You, She's So Heavy by the Beatles on guitar. This song uses a must-know Beatles guitar technique called arpeggio picking and we're going to start off the song 
with a chord progression here down in first position and some open position chords. And we're gonna arpeggio pick through the chords. So instead of just strumming the strings, we're gonna pick individual strings in a really cool pattern. But before we get started, I really appreciate your support at the links below. If you haven't checked out my free blues training series, you gotta check that out at the link below. And also you can get a free book that I wrote all about soloing called Melodic Expressions. So check that out at the first link. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play I Want You by the Beatles on guitar. We're gonna start off with this arpeggiated guitar part that moves through some chords. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> So we're gonna be counting this in a six, eight time signature. So I've got six beats per bar, and we're gonna start on a D minor chord. And I like to play this D minor with my second finger, then pinky, then first finger. A lot of people play it like this, but for this song, you're gonna to wanna to learn to play it this way so that you have your third finger free for the second chord we're gonna play. So we're gonna play D minor, then we'll add our third finger down on the third fret here of the fourth string. And this turns into a D minor over F. And then we're gonna go to an E7 flat nine. So this is a little bit of an interesting chord shape here. We're gonna play the second fret on the fourth string, first fret on the third string, third fret on the second string, and then first fret there barring on the first string. So two, one, three, one, right? E7 flat nine, here's your root, E or E here. Then the next chord is B flat seven, which is your typical bar chord here. One, three, one, three, one, starting on the fifth string there. So B flat seven. And then the last chord is A augmented. So this is like your typical A triad here, two, two, open, but we're gonna raise that open string to the first fret, which will give us two, two, one. And your root note is A. It's an A augmented. So one more time, D minor, Put the F in the bass, E7 flat nine, B flat seven, A augmented. Now we're gonna arpeggiate through these chords like this. So that's our first two chords. We've got the D minor. We're gonna start on the fourth string and just pick down a one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going down through the strings and then back up with my picking hand. Then we'll add that third finger. Go to the next shape. Now on this chord, we're gonna pick from the fourth string to the first string like this. But then we're gonna immediately jump down and go and do a bass line, three, two, one, on the fifth string which leads us into that B flat seven chord. And on this chord, we're gonna pick the strings five, three, two, one, two, three. So. So, so far. play the A augmented and we'll play the strings. Five, three, two, one. So all together. So that's our intro and then we go into this lead part which doubles the melody. It sounds like this.
This is a great example of using the pentatonic scale in a lead line here. Now the guitar is just doubling the vocal melody. I want you. And so what we're gonna do is start here on the seventh fret of the fourth string and play seven, then down to the third string, five, seven, and we're gonna bend. And you just kind of bend that note up and then you mute it. Then again, but this time, seven, five, seven, bend. I want you so bad. So here we're gonna just, again, play off the melody. Think about the notes of the melody. And then sometimes there'll be these little like ghost notes, you know, hammer-ons and stuff. I want you so bad. And then again, I want you. Now that one, you're just going back and forth, kind of milking that bend. Again, all pentatonic here, right? Seven, five, seven, bend, up and down. I want you. And sometimes it'll kind of fall off the notes. That's a pull off to five and then seven on the fourth string. And then we do the walk down. I want you so bad, it's driving me mad, it's driving me mad. So that's all just going down using notes of the pentatonic, right? So we're gonna walk up. I want you so bad, then fall down. So five, seven, five, seven, Five, seven, five, hammer to seven, driving me mad, it's driving me. So that's five, seven, five, three, five, all the way down to that low A root note. And then the band's on the A minor there. Then we go up to what we call the four chord, like a blues, right? We do the same thing, but based around a D minor now. So we're gonna be on the 12th fret of the fourth string. Then he does this really cool double stop. So that's 12, 10, and then what you do is you grab with your third finger two strings and bend it back and forth. It's a great rock lick. And then. Same as before, but this time we're gonna go. And walk up 10, 11, 12 on the fifth string. And those are triplets there, so. Ba, 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 just use all down picks. And then the guitar goes one. And you know, the low bass. There's this little bass line, little walking down there. But what I do is go back to that E7 flat nine chord that we played in the intro. And you can just hit your low E and go one, two, and three, and four, and one, and. So that's your low E, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Then on the third time we go one, two, and three, and four, and. And then we're back to. Have fun practicing I Want You by the Beatles on guitar. Remember that that's a classic Beatles guitar technique where you just take a chord progression and then you arpeggio pick through it. So rather than strumming the strings, you're picking a pattern that has a really unique sound. Another super common thing that the Beatles did, of course, was play the melody parts on guitar. So George Harrison's solo is basically the melody of the song. And if you wanna learn more about soloing and you got some value out of today's lesson, you're gonna get a lot more value out of the free exclusive content that I have down below. These are some lessons that are about blues guitar 
that come with tabs and sheet music. These videos are not on YouTube. So check that out as my gift to you. As always, leave any song requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching and for being a part of this series, and we'll see you next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number seven of the Abbey Road series. In today's video we're going to learn how to play Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles on guitar. If this is the first episode in this series you've seen, I'm posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album Abbey Road. Today's song is a classic for an acoustic guitar player's repertoire and we're going to go through all the sections of Here Comes the Sun using a capo on the seventh fret. Now there's a lot in this song and it requires a certain type of technique where you're strumming and you're picking the melody notes at the same time. It's definitely more of an advanced technique so take your time with this one. And before we get started I want to hook you up with something right away. I've got a free PDF that you can download that's my book all about soloing and if you're interested in blues guitar I've got a free training series that you can get as well at the first link down below. So check that out as my gift to you and with that said let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles on guitar. Now I'll be going over this main acoustic guitar part and I'm going to use a capo here on the seventh fret and I'll be playing in the key of D but it's actually going to be the key of A. You know it's just transposed way up here. So I'll be thinking D, G, and A, but of course if you're playing with other musicians, you know, you would want to tell them the transposed chords. But for our purposes today, I'll just be thinking D, G, and A7. So let me play the first part for you and then I'll break it down. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one. that sound effect <laughs> right so what we're doing is we're starting on a D chord and then we're going to a G shape and then an A7 now the D lasts two bars so one two three four two two three four then G two three four then A7 now again to not make this lesson really really long I'm gonna go over kind of the main points here and what you have to be able to do to get this song down is you have to be able to play a melody while you're strumming the chords. So you have to keep your hand moving back and forth like this. One and two and three and four and one, just eighth notes. And you're gonna go. So what I'm doing is I'm playing this melody starting on beat two. One and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and. and then I'm editing the chord slightly. So for instance, sometimes I'll play the G like this. Then I'll put this finger down to get the melody, because I have to go. Got to make sure I'm playing that melody, otherwise it'll just sound like G to A, you know, you want it to go. Now that's another really cool thing, as you go from this G shape, you can play open strings as sort of like a cheat strum in between the chords. 
and it just adds a nice little filler between the chords as you're switching. So. second time so that's G and then I'm reaching up with my index finger two zero and then three on the second string then a7 and I just hit that basically and give it a strum and let it ring and that's where that sound effect comes in so now really for the intro I'm thinking about the melody like it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little darling, it feels like years since it's been clear. And that's basically the verse melody. Now I am doing this little lick on A7. You're going. That's what you want to do. So you strum the A7 to the second string. Like this. And then lift it open, back down. Add the pinky for the sus, and then open E. That's an A7 sus 4. Then we're into the chorus, and that's the... Here comes the sun. So what I'm thinking about now is the melody for the chorus. Here comes the sun, doo -doo -doo. here comes the sun, and I say. So I have to be able to articulate that melody, and with basically the same chords, we're going to change just one chord for the chorus here. We're going to go D for two bars, then G for a bar, and then instead of A7 in the chorus, we're going to go to E7. And I say. Back to D. It's all right. So here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. So slowly. So again, editing this chord, getting that open first string, right? Then G, same thing. Here comes the two. Seven, and I said, and that's two zero three. And then it's all right. Then we go into this lick. And that's a really great lick there. It's one of my favorite acoustic guitar licks. You slide from two to four on the third string. And then put your middle finger down here on the third fret of the second string. And you just arpeggiate through the strings. Then two, three, zero, zero, three, zero, back to two, three, zero. So the middle finger stays there. But that lower note moves. That's so genius. Then you do a double pull off. So that's three to two, and then four to two. Three to two on the second string, four to two on the third string. Then we're back to the verse. So basically, those are the two main sections there. And then after we do, I believe, the second verse it is, then we go on to the bridge. This is a really cool guitar part. It's, it's basically 
arpeggiating chord. So this is a open A, and then the fourth fret on the fifth string, and then the second fret on the fourth string. Then you go to an F chord, and you arpeggiate three, two, one, then a C chord, and that's three, two, zero, starting on the fifth string, so. Then a G over B, which is two, zero, zero, starting on the fifth string, and then just these two notes here, third fret and second fret. So it's sort of a G over B and then to the lower part of that chord, basically adding in the root. So then D, so. And the timing's a little tricky here. You can go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. There's a really cool behind the scenes of George Martin and uh, George Harrison's son. They're basically doing an interview in the studio, and he said that this part was based off an Indian rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one two, three, four. So for me, I've just heard the song so many times that I, I don't even think about it. I just play it. But if you count it out, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. this for the whole bridge till the last time the last time we go so that's just this little building melody off of the a7 so that's seven there with that high G note then back to the verse it feels like you since it's been let me do the chorus here comes the sun Then at the very end, we do a tag. We do, it's all right. It's all right. And we do the same riff. But we end with the latter part of the bridge from the F, so. That's gotta be one of the coolest endings ever. So it goes. fun practicing here comes the sun i hope you got some value out of today's video before you go don't forget to get my free training series at the first link down below be sure to check out the abbey road series playlist as well i'll be leaving all these videos up for you to reference for years to come so any song you want to learn from the abbey road album it'll be here on youtube for you as always leave any song requests get those in down below thanks for your support here on the channel and until next time
How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number eight of the Abbey Road series. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to play Because by the Beatles on guitar. This song uses a classic Beatles technique that we've seen on this album already with a song like I Want You, She's So Heavy. We're gonna take a chord progression and just arpeggiate our way through the chords. And we're gonna use some jazzier sounding chords with some diminished chords and some 13 chords. But before we get into it, I really appreciate your support at the links below. I've got a free book that you can download all about soloing and also a free blues training series with tabs and sheet music that you can get down below at the first link. This is some exclusive content that's not on YouTube. So I wanted to hook you up with that right away. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Because by the Beatles on guitar. We've got two sections we're gonna learn. The first section is 10 bars long, and here's what it sounds like. So for the first two bars, we're gonna play C sharp minor, which is this bar chord here on the fourth fret. And we're gonna arpeggiate through the strings like this. Then we're gonna reach with our pinky and grab that seventh fret on the fifth string, so. again. Then we're going to move up to a D sharp minor 7 flat 5. And we're going to play here on the 6th fret of the 5th string, 6, 7, 6, then put your pinky down for 8. So then you come back, then we go a little bass line here. 7, 9, or E, F sharp. Then we play this chord, which is a G sharp 7 chord, but I start with just the fifth string down like this. And then add the bass note. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. That's the first four bars. So all of that together sounds like this. to an A bar chord for a bar, then C sharp minor again for a bar. And then we have A7, and then we're gonna go to A13. So we're gonna move that pinky back. So here's your, your standard A bar chord. We'll take this finger off to make it a seventh, and then put your pinky on the eighth fret of the second string. That's doubling this note up the octave, so it's still a seventh chord, but then we're gonna move it back. So the arpeggio picking would sound like this for the next four bars. So that's A. sharp minor. Then A7. And then 1 and 2 and on the A13. You just let it ring out. 1 and 2 and. Then we get this really cool chord progression. And this is a D major chord to a D diminished. And what we're going to do is we're going to play that standard bar chord, 5, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 5, 
seventh, and then we'll go to flatting the fifth here. So we're gonna take that note on the seventh fret of the fourth string and drop it one fret. And then I'll bring my first finger underneath to play that note F as I take my pinky off on the second string. So it'll go from the seventh fret down to the sixth. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and D. Diminished. Then we start again. So the whole thing played as one piece sounds like this. Then we have one other section, which is the interlude section. And this brings in one new chord. It's an F sharp. And here we're gonna play F sharp for two bars, and then G sharp seven for two bars. So that's gonna sound like this. There was a little move there on the G sharp seven. You grab that sharp five there again on the seventh fret, and then you finish with this. Then you're back to the first part. Have fun practicing because by the Beatles, make sure to take it slow as you work your way through these kind of tricky chords and arpeggio patterns. If this is the first video in this series you've seen, make sure you're subscribed because I'm posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album, Abbey Road. We're going in chronological order and just working our way through the album. Before you go, don't forget to download my book all about soloing and get the free blues training down below. Also, feel free to leave any comments for future album requests or song requests that you would like to see here on the channel. Thanks so much for your support and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to the Abbey Road series episode number nine. In today's lesson, we're gonna learn how to play You Never Give Me Your Money by the Beatles on guitar. This song is pretty involved, so it's actually gonna be a two-part lesson. So I'm gonna get through the first half of this song and then we're gonna break down the next part in a video coming tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. But before we get started, I wanna hook you up with something right away. I've got a free blues training series if you're interested in playing blues guitar and also a book all about soloing. So if you're interested in playing some lead like what I was doing at the beginning of this video, check out the link down below and get this exclusive content. All right, well with that said, let's dive into today's lesson. Let's break down how to play You Never Give Me Your Money by the Beatles on guitar. We're gonna start off with this eight bar intro that's primarily piano but I've arranged the chords for guitar. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. So 
So that's our intro, and we've got an eight bar progression. We're gonna start out on an A minor seven, which looks like your typical A minor chord. We're just gonna remove that finger that's on the third string, so we'll play open there. So starting with the fifth string, open, two, open, one, open. And you know, this is right at the top, one, two, three, four, then we'll switch to an A minor seven with a D in the bass. And the voicing that I use here is starting with the fourth string, open, then two, one, three. So two on the third string, one on the second string, and then three, I'm playing my pinky there on the first string. And then I go to a D minor seven, and that's with the words money even though the first time we're playing through this without singing, so. It's gonna be anticipated. One and two and three and four and. Then we go to G7, just standard G7 chord. And then C major seven. So that's your C chord without the first finger. So, so far we've got. C major seven. For the next four bars, we're gonna play. So that's a bar of F major seven. And I'm using my thumb here, one, three, three, two, one, open, all six strings. Now you can remove the thumb and just play from five down. Or you could just play this smaller F as well. Three, two, one, open. It's a great chord too. Just three fingers. So one, two, three, four. Then we'll go to B minor seven flat five, a little jazz chord here. And that's gonna be starting on the fifth string. Two, three, two, three. We'll mute the high E and the low E. Then we'll go to E7 which is like your E chord, just again without that third finger. So we've got an open fourth string in there. And we'll anticipate these, these chords here. So one and two and really the E7 is on the and of two. One and two and three and four and then A minor seven for two bars. Okay, so the first eight bars sound like this. A minor seven, then with the D in the bass to D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, F major seven, B minor seven flat five, E seven, A minor seven. Then we're gonna repeat that two more times, but the vocals come in. You never give me your money. G seven. A minor seven. Now the last time we're gonna go to G seven. And that's gonna lead us into the next section. So I played a bar of A minor seven. One, two, three, four, then one, two, G7, G7 on beats three and four in that last bar, the eighth bar there. Then we go into the next section. That sounds like this. Out of college, money spent, see no future, pay no rent, all the money's gone, nowhere to go. What a genius chord progression there. So we're gonna start on the C chord. So that G7 that we had from the previous section is a five chord that leads us into C. And we're gonna start playing two chords per bar here for the first three bars. We're gonna go C, 
E7, A minor, C7. So that's your C chord, but you add your pinky to the third fret of the third string. So. See no future pain or rent. So that's basically two strums per chord. One, two, one, two, switch, two, switch, two. Then we go F. And sometimes I'll play just this Hendrix kind of chord here. Sometimes I'll play the full F bar chord, but with the thumb. So or you could do it like this. Whichever way is comfortable for you is fine. So F, then G, C. Now the bass here does this cool part, which is a little blues bass line. So that's just the third fret of the fifth string, then the second fret on the fourth string, fifth fret, then third string, two, three, and then you walk back those same notes. C or I was playing C over G there. It's another great chord. So walk the bass. Now you could just play C if you don't want to do the bass line. You just you know all the money's gone just straight to C. Then it goes again. We got this new chord progression. That's the oh this oh that magic feeling. It's our lyric cue. So what's going on here is we have a three bar phrase and we're going to play three chords. B flat to F to C. So a B flat is going to start on the fifth string, one, then three, three, three. And you know, you'll see me play this a number of different ways. Sometimes I'll use my pinky, sometimes I'll use my third finger, but it's all still one, three, three, three. And then F, again the thumb chord, or go for this if that's what you've been using, and then C. So it's a three bar phrase, so it's just like one, two, three, four, switch, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, again. We repeat this five times. Have fun practicing You Never Give Me Your Money by the Beatles on guitar. I hope you got some value out of today's video. Make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate all your support here on the channel. Don't forget to download also your free book and get the blues training series as well. Also drop me some comments below. Let me know what you think of the series, what you wanna see in upcoming videos, any song requests, get that all in down below. Thanks for your support here on the channel and until next time. Let's break down part two of how to play You Never Give Me Your Money by the Beatles on guitar. Now our previous lesson, we ended with repeating this third section that's three bars long. It's the B flat to the F to the C like this. Now on the recording, there's a lot of ahs and background vocals. And then we segue out of this section up to a D7 chord. And we're gonna kind of jump through a bunch of what seem like random chords. Here's what it sounds like. into like a blues rhythm pattern there. So what I did was we're coming out of the B flat F C and you just take that chord 
and move it up two frets and add your pinky to the fifth fret of the third string. And you've got a D7 chord. We're gonna play mainly eighth notes, just down strums, one and two and three and four and we'll play a bar of D7, then we'll go E flat seven to G7. And I'm playing this, you know, with my thumb here. You can do this chord, that's a common chord. E flat seven, G seven. Then C seven to A. So C seven is the same as this E flat seven, right? Just on, you know, with my first finger here on the first fret. Then we go to A. Now here we're gonna go one and two and three and four and then we go E flat seven back down to C seven. So it's kind of a cool move of like it's it's the same interval. It's a minor third, but different chords. And then we go F sharp to E flat, which is again uh, the same interval just going up in thirds. So this is something that actually Hendrix does in The Wind Cries Mary, and uh, it's a really cool chord progression of minor thirds. So F sharp, I'll just play that F sharp here, and then go to E flat seven. So this F sharp would be like a bar chord, and then here. So from the D seven, D seven, E flat seven, G seven, then I'll anticipate one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Then we play an A and we go, just walk up F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So I'm playing octaves there. Second fret here on the sixth string, fourth fret on the fourth string and just walking up. So A, two, and three, and four, and. So all of this together sounds like this. D7, E flat seven, G7, C7, A, E flat seven, C7, F sharp, E flat seven, A, walk up. Then we're at the lyrics, one sweet dream, you know, pick up the bags, get in the limousine. That sounds like this. Outro section and what a cool guitar part this is. So here I'm playing an A chord and I'm doing this blues rhythm pattern where I'm playing a power chord five and seven and then you reach up with your pinky and you grab the ninth fret on the fifth string. So one and two and three and four and it's on beats two and four that I'm doing that little pinky action there. So one and two and three and four and then up to B. Same thing, two frets higher. Then I move this through C, E, and A, like this. C, E, A. And that's two beats of C, two beats of E, to four beats of A. So it's a four bar progression, and all together we've got A, B, C, E, A. And then we go to this D pedal tone. So we're gonna go. We're gonna play triads on the top three strings, but keep this D fourth string open and pedaling between all those chords. So we'll start on a D minor chord. And then we'll move up to G. This is a little G triad. Four, three, three. Again, keeping that D in the bass. A minor, little A minor triad. Just three strings there, five, 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 with the D in the bass. And then back to G with the D in the bass. So D minor, G over D, A minor over D, G over D. Soon we'll be away from here. 
Then we go back to our A rhythm pattern for a bar. We go up to B again, but this time, check it out, we're gonna play it for two beats. It's a two, four bar, one and two, and then we'll go straight to this arpeggiated guitar part for our ending. So this uses three chords here. It's a C to a G with a B in the bass to an A. This is like a one finger A, but we'll reach up and put the pinky on the fifth fret of the fifth string. It's a very common A chord that the Beatles used all the time. I mean, you hear this in I Got a Feeling, you hear this in like, right, in my life. So all together, C, G over B, just one finger and A, but we're gonna have this specific arpeggio picking pattern that goes like this. What a cool guitar part. So we're gonna start with that C and we're gonna play strings five, four, three, one and two, and then we're gonna switch to that G over B. So we'll put our second finger here and then play five, the fifth string, five, four, three, two. So. And then we'll come back up to that third string, so. Then go to that A chord with the pinky and play. The first three strings, five, four, three, and then we'll give a little strum, so all together. practicing you never give me your money by the Beatles on guitar I hope you got some value out of today's video as always I recommend practicing this song along with the recording now before you go don't forget to download your free book and also get the free blues training series that has some exclusive videos that are not on YouTube so if you got some value out of this lesson you're really gonna get a lot more out of the free videos with tabs so check that out at the link down below as always, leave any comments for song requests or things you would like to see in future videos here on the channel. Thanks so much for your support and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number 10 of the Abbey Road series. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to play Sun King by the Beatles on guitar. The song starts off with this really cool Jimi Hendrix kind of double stop riff and then goes into a slow vamp that's just based around two chords, E6 and F sharp minor. I'm gonna break down the whole song for you step by step, but before we get into it, I really appreciate your support at the links below. If you're interested in learning more about guitar, check out my website, johnmclennan.com. There's a lot of great resources there, including a free book that you can get all about soloing. All right, well, with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Sun King by the Beatles on guitar. Now, this song starts out with a four bar vamp on an E6 chord. And that's just like your typical E chord, but you're gonna add the second fret on the second string. It's a great sound, it's a classic Beatles chord. And there's an overdub that's doing this sort of Hendrix style double stop lick. It's a really cool guitar part, it sounds like this. 
and the band is playing that E6 chord underneath that. So all together, it sounds like this. So we've got this little riff here, and the more I listen to this album, the more I feel like I'm hearing the influence of Jimi Hendrix and the chord progressions and even little guitar riffs like this, which sounds like it could be like Wind Cries Mary or something. So that's the seventh fret, sliding up to nine, then do a double stop, and then slide back. Now you could do it here, and then you could play the, the E6 underneath that, like that, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and it's this little pickup, and then we do this little variation, and that's going into an F sharp minor chord, so that's zero, four, or slide into four, and then two on the fifth string. You're on F sharp minor. Then we have F sharp minor for two bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, then E6 for two bars. There's little fills like this. like a little triad there like an F sharp minor moving it up like it's almost has like an E major 7 there right and the E6 great sound and you can kind of arpeggio pick that three times and then we go to this F over G on these Ahs and that's just a G in the bass here and then an F triad two three four one two three four then That's a bar of C to C major 7, like something, right? Then G7 to A7. Just the perfect changes there. So C, 2, 3, C major 7, G7 to A7. Now that's going to go two times. Then we go to this next section. Everybody's laughing Everybody is happy So this is just F to D7 One bar each For four bars Then we go back to E F sharp minor, what a genius move from the F and then just go up one fret and you've got the F sharp minor 7. Back to the E6. So the chords that I played out of the, out of the last, you know, everybody's laughing, everybody's happy, then you go C to E minor 7. That's an E minor with that pinky added there. Then C7 and F, one bar each. So here comes C7, then F, and back to F sharp minor.
Have fun practicing Sun King by the Beatles on guitar. I hope you got some value out of today's video. And if this is the first video in this series you've seen, you're going to want to make sure you subscribe because I'm posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album, Abbey Road. And I've already done another Beatles album, Rubber Soul. You can check out that playlist on my channel. You can learn every song from that album as well. Before you go, don't forget to download my free book all about soloing and get the blues training series. You can get that at the link below. It's some exclusive content that's not on YouTube where you can get free tabs and sheet music with these lessons as well. So check that out as my gift to you. And as always, leave any song requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to the Abbey Road series number 11. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to play Mean Mr. Mustard by the Beatles on guitar. In today's lesson we're going to break down some classic George Harrison guitar techniques. In this song George plays what I call a backbeat rhythm where he's just playing on two and four. But we're also going to incorporate a bass note with that so if you're playing this at home you can really fill out the sound and have a full sound all by yourself. But before we get into it I really appreciate your support at the links below. I've got a free blues training series that you can check out and this chord progression is actually very similar to a blues. It's 13 bars long, which is almost like our 12 bar blues, something I talk a lot about here on the channel. So I just wanted to hook you up with that free blues training right away. Check it out at the link below. And with that said, let's dive into this song. Let's break down how to play Mean Mr. Mustard by the Beatles on guitar. Now this is a short song, it's only about one minute long, so we've got 12 bars of music that we're going to go through just using a few chords. Now the guitar part on the recording that George Harrison is playing is more of like what you call a backbeat guitar part. So he's just taking chords and going like one, two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four. But if you're playing this by yourself, you might want to incorporate a bass note as well. So that's what I've done with this guitar part. It's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. So we're going to be alternating the bass note and doing this backbeat strum as well with some muting. Now you want to hold down an E7 for the first four bars, and that's like your typical E chord, but we're going to add our pinky to the third fret of the second string. So we've got open, two, two, one, three, open. That's your E7 chord. And you're going to play all six strings if you strum the chord like that. Now for our part, we're going to play two bass notes like this, one and, just eighth notes and we'll pick that sixth string like this, one and. And then on beats two and four, we're going to strum the rest of the strings and then we're going to mute right afterwards, so one and two. And then on beat three, we're going to alternate bass notes. So here we're going to go to the fifth string and do two bass notes there and then a strum. So one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. And we'll play that for four bars like this. Now 
again, just leave out the bass notes if you just want to play exactly like the recording. Then we're going to go to a B7 shape. And here I'm going to go to this bar chord starting on the fifth string, second fret. I'm going to play two, four, two, four, two. And we're going to do the same idea. We'll start with our bass note, though, this time on the fifth string. And for the second bass note, we're going to go to this we're going to bring that first finger up and go to the second fret on the sixth string. So we'll play two bars of that, but we're going to walk up in the second bar like this. One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four and... So that's bass, bass, strum, alternate bass. Then in the second me measure, we'll go bass, bass, strum, but then we'll walk up. B7, C7, C sharp 7, D7 with 3, 3 and 4 and so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Okay, so so far we've got with the E7. B7. Then when we get here, we're going to go three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two. We're going to do the same thing that we did on the B7, just up here on D7. And then we're going to walk down three and four and back down to B7. So three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So that was two more bars there of the B7. Then we have the final chord progression, which sounds like this. And this is where the lyrics are like, just a mean old man. You know, you go E7, one and two, then C7, three and four, and then B7 in our last measure, we're gonna go one and two, three, four, and we're gonna change our strumming pattern. So we'll go bass, bass, strum, then strum, strum. So those two bars sound like this. Then again. So all 12 bars played as one piece sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Have fun practicing Mean Mr. Mustard. Be sure to play this along with the recording. That'll really help you get the feel. And again, if this is the first video in this series you've seen, I'm posting a brand new song lesson on how to play every single song on the Abbey Road album. We're going in chronological order. It's been a ton of fun going through this song series with you and we've still got more to come so make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to get your free blues training series down below along with the book all about soloing check that out and as always leave any comments down below let me know what you thought of the video or future song requests that you would like to see here on the channel thanks for watching and until next time
How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to the Abbey Road series episode number 12. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to play Polythene Pam by the Beatles on guitar. Now this song starts off with just three chords that is a classic guitar move that just represents rock and roll. So many early rock and roll songs you can play with just these three chords. So I'm going to break that down for you and then go into the rest of the progression so you can get playing this song today. Before we dive in though, I really appreciate your support at the links below. If you haven't downloaded my free book yet all about soloing, you're really going to want to check that out and get the blues training videos that come with that with tabs and just some exclusive content that's not on YouTube that you can get for free at the link below. So check that out as my gift to you. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Polythene Pam by the Beatles on guitar. We're gonna start with some open position chords and there's two guitar parts here. One goes like this. And the other one comes in in bar two like this. Three. One, two, three. And slides into this E chord up here. So what I've done is combine both the parts just for a one guitar approach. It would sound like this. One, two, three, four. So what I'm playing is half notes. I'm playing D, then to A, then to E. And this is one of the most rock and roll chord progressions of all time. Just right? D, A, E. And it's two beats on D and A, and then four beats on E like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now, when I get to that E, I slide up to this seventh fret power chord, seven, nine, nine, you know, so one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, one, and two, and three. the verse lyrics come in and you do it two times, same progression. Then you go to G, a one, two, three, four, then B, two, three, four. Then we do a similar progression to the intro, D, A, E, but this time we're gonna go C, D, E, like this. And again. That's the verse. So all of that together sounds like this. Well, you should see Polythene Pam. And then you basically just go right back to the top and repeat everything. So all of this together with the intro sounds like this. again everything repeats now when we play this the second time after this we go on so we're coming out of the progression C D E and then we just play all the way until the end D A E D A E again that rock and roll chord progression fun practicing Polythene Pam by the Beatles on guitar. If this is the first video in this series you've seen, you're going to want to make sure that you subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. I'm posting a brand new song lesson every single week on how to play every song on the Beatles album Abbey Road. We're going in chronological order and I'm breaking them all down for you step by step. 
Before you go, don't forget to get your free blues training at the link down below. It's some really valuable concepts that are going to help you out a lot as a guitar player for playing rock and roll and many other styles as well. Also, leave any comments down below for future song ideas. I love hearing from you all and I want to keep incorporating content that you all want to see. So whether that's you know, song requests or genres, specific things you want to see on the channel, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for your support and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number 13 of the Abbey Road series. In today's video we're going to learn how to play She Came In Through the Bathroom Window by the Beatles on guitar. If this is the first video in this series you've seen, every week I post a brand new song lesson from the Beatles' Abbey Road. We've been going in chronological order, breaking down the entire album. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to smash the thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. You're getting this information completely for free. And as a bonus, I wanna hook you up with a free gift before we get started. If you're interested in improving your lead playing or your blues guitar playing, I've got a free book that you can download at the link Link below all about soloing and you can get some blues training videos that are not on YouTube that have some tabs and some sheet music to go along with as well so check that out as my gift to you and with that said let's break this song down let's break down how to play she came in through the bathroom window by the Beatles on guitar now this song segues in from the previous song and we're gonna start with a walk down from the note E and we're gonna go down the notes of an A major scale like this. Then we hit the A chord and that's where the vocal comes in. She came in through the bathroom window. So the band's kind of building one and two and three and four and 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 so there's those eighth notes going but the guitar is just really just half notes one two three four one two three four so I'm playing E D C sharp B and then we hit an A chord and those frets are seven, five, four, two, then A. Then the vocal, she came in through the bathroom window. So we'll just hit that A chord, let it ring out for four beats. One, came in through the bathroom, D chord, two, three, four, back to A, and D. A. By the back of her own lagoon. Okay, so what we're doing here is just alternating. So we start with that A, we play a bar of A, bar of D, bar of A, bar of D. Then on the third time here, we play a bar of A to two bars of D. So all of that together with the walk down sounds like this. Three, four. One more A, okay, now this is where the vocal goes, didn't anybody tell her? And what happens here is all of a sudden now instead of D major, we go to a D minor and we're gonna play this chord progression, starting with the A. Didn't anybody, D minor, two, three,
Okay, so for this next section, we're gonna play a bar of A to a bar of D minor now. So I just took that one note of the D major chord and dropped it down one fret. So A, D minor, A, D minor. Those are each a bar per chord. Then we go to G7. And that's gonna be kind of like your C chord here. We just play the third fret of the sixth string, second fret on the fifth string, open, 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 and then first fret on the first string. Then we have a C to a G over B, but it's anticipated on the G over B like this. One and two and three and four and... And this is a common chord progression we see a lot on this album is like a walk down. We're gonna go C, G over B, then G7, then C, A7. So this A7 is just two fingers there. So C, and then you keep that note there, and then just add the second fret on the second string. Now, when we play this C to A7, there's actually a two, four bar. So we go like one and two and one, two, three, four, and then we're back to the D chord, so that's where the melody again. You know, said she'd always been a dancer. Okay, so this part, the second part where it goes to minor from the didn't anybody tell you lyric cue, I'll play that section all together for you. One, two, three, four. Didn't anybody tell her D minor. Back to D. She worked at 15 clubs a day. Okay, now the second time here, after we've repeated back, we do it twice the length of the first time, which is a pretty cool little change there. I think the lyrics are like, and so I quit the police department. Two, three, four. I got myself a steady job. to the minor. G7. And then it just ends there with that oh yeah on the C to A7 let the A7 ring out. Have fun practicing. She came in through the bathroom window. I hope you got some value out of today's video. Don't forget to download your free book at the link below. Have fun practicing and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to the Abbey Road series episode number 14. 
In today's video, we're gonna learn how to play Golden Slumbers by the Beatles on guitar. I've taken that classic piano intro part and arranged it for guitar. I'm gonna show you a way of playing this finger style, so we're not gonna use a pick. And we're gonna do sort of this claw and then thumb technique where we pinch the strings and play a bass note just to get that piano sound from the guitar. Before we get into it though, I really appreciate you checking out the links below. I've got a free book that you can download that's all about soloing. It's got over a hundred licks and exercises in it, and along with that book, you also get a free blues training series with tabs as well. So check that out as my gift to you at the link below. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Golden Slumbers by the Beatles on guitar. We're gonna start with a one bar intro on an A minor seven chord, and then we're gonna go into the verse section. Here's what it sounds like. What a beautiful part here. Now, again, I've taken that sort of piano part and arranged it for guitar. So we're gonna start on this three note chord here. And really it's part of this A minor seven chord shape here. If you thought of your A minor and then you just put your pinky on, that gives you an A minor seven. But we're just gonna play the top three strings. So we'll play the third fret on the first string, the first fret on the second string, and the second fret on the third string. Now I am playing this finger style, so with my finger picking hand, I'm gonna sort of break up the chord and play, to start I'll play two strings here, the first string and the second string, with my middle and index finger, and then my thumb's gonna go on the third string, and I'll alternate like this. play three bars of that. Okay, so it's one bar that's just an intro. One and two and three and four. Then the vocal comes in once there was a way. Stay there. One. Get back homeward. Now here we have a bass note that moves to the D note, so our fourth string with our thumb. And now I'm gonna bring in more fingers. I'm gonna play index, middle, and ring to play three strings here. And I'm gonna do a D minor chord. Then I'm gonna move it up. It's an E minor. And then I'll play what looks like a D chord, but at the fifth fret, it's really an F chord, and then back to E minor. So it's like D minor, E minor, F, E minor, but it's all over D. So it's really just moving the harmonies of a D minor sound. And then back. Then you go to G7. Two bars. Okay, so so far, starting from the verse, two bars of A minor 7. D minor, two bars. If you want, you can move move the changes here. G7, two bars. Then we go into this. Okay, so what I did here for the G7, again, I, I moved the thumb is always, your thumb is always going to play the root note or the bass note. One, two, and three, and four, and then we're going to spend two beats on C. One, and two, and then E7, two beats, A minor, two beats, and then we're going to play D minor nine over A, which is an open A string fifth string open, then third fret, second fret, third fret, and then
and then open E. And then we're gonna do this little walk that's like, it reminds me of Blackbird, right? It's that same walk. So technically you could think of these chords, G, A minor seven, G over B, then back to G, then C. And those are all quarter notes. So it's like one, two, three, four, then C. So what a beautiful little part there. So the D minor nine over A for four beats. One, two, three, four, then. So when we start the faster moving chords, when the chords start moving two beats each, like this, one and two and three and four, and when we get to the A minor, we have a two four bar. We're gonna count one, two. Then when we go to the D minor nine over A, we'll restart our count and just go one, two, three, four, then. So the whole verse sounds like this. One, two. Then we go. So this is the golden slumbers, fill your eyes. And that's really just a big C chord to a big F add nine chord. So it's just this rhythm, one and two and three and four and F add nine, C. Then again, C, smiles away, you and you right. Then we go to the same thing as before, C. E7, two, far, two four bar, A minor, D minor nine over A, four counts, and the little walk up. Have fun practicing golden slumbers on guitar. Make sure to subscribe. If this is the first video in this series you've seen, I'm posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Abbey Road album. We're going in chronological order, so make sure you subscribe. Also, I'm gonna leave all these videos up on YouTube so you can access them at any time, and you'll be able to play every song on Abbey Road. It's a great album. Before you go, don't forget to download my free book in the description below and get the blues training. If you got some value out of today's video, I know you're gonna be able to get a ton more out of my free training that you can get down below. As always, leave any song requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number 15 of the Abbey Road series. In today's video we're going to learn how to play Carry That Weight by the Beatles on guitar. 
I can't believe that we've done 15 of these videos. If you've been following along with this series, I've been posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album, Abbey Road. We've been going in chronological order through the album and up to date is Carry That Weight. Now this song is in the key of C and we're even gonna bring in some jazzier chord shapes as we take a look at the bridge chord progression for this song. But before we get into it, I really appreciate you checking out the links below. I've got a free book all about soloing that you can get. And with that book, you'll also get some blues training videos with tabs as well that are not on YouTube. So check that out at the first link down below. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Carry That Weight by the Beatles on guitar. Now we're going to start out on a C chord. We've got a four bar progression that's repeated. I'll play it for you first, and then I'll break it down. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So we're going to start with a bar of C. And this is the bo uh, boy, you're going to carry that weight. So four, two, three, you're going to go to G7 is the next chord. And the way I get there is I just bring these two fingers up and this first finger down. And you're on this kind of folk style G7, but it sounds good in this song. So we've got a bar of C. One, two, three. Four, G7, two, three, four, then stay there, two, three, then back to C. And that's your four bar progression. So it's a bar of C, two bars of G7, and then a bar of C. And then that's gonna repeat. So we'll play it again. One, two, three, da 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 the second time we walk down so we play C to C over B and that's just playing here the second fret then open D open G first fret on the second string and open E so the bass is just walking down to A minor 7 which is the next chord of the next section you know where it's like you never give me your money so uh, rhythmically I like playing eighth notes so with a little 16th note flare, and I, I might do something like this. It's one and two E and a three and four E and a... So I'm kind of hitting the bass notes, and then the chord. for G7. Okay, now we're into the next section, and this is, again, sort of the medley part of You Never Give Me Your Money. So for here, we're gonna go. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we have a seven bar progression here. So one bar of A minor seven, which looks like your C chord just without the third finger. And then we're gonna go to A minor seven over D. So what I did there was bring the second finger down and add my pinky to the third fret of the first string. So I've got open fourth string, second fret, first fret, third fret. And then I go, to a D minor seven, so da 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 da. Then to G seven, da 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 da. Now 
here, I'm playing C major seven. So that's C without the first finger. And you could just play straight C, or you can kind of make it jazzier. The next couple chords in this progression are almost jazz sounding chords, right? You've got an F major seven next, which I play like this. It's a little bit more advanced. One, three, three, two, one, open. I'm using my thumb there. Or you could just play kind of this little F with the open first string. That'll work as well. And then here you're gonna go B minor seven flat five. Two, three, two, three, E seven. And then A minor seven, break down. So this whole section sounds like this. One, two, it's played twice by the way, here we go. Da, 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 da. Then we go to G7. Back to the, the boy, you're gonna carry that weight. So what I did there was I hit a G7. One and two and three and four and. And that's just hitting a quarter note on beat one, then resting. One, two, and three. Then on the and a three and four and. All down strums here. One and two and three and four and chorus. Same as before. change this is how it ends and this is genius it changes keys so we're gonna go C to C over B or you can play G over B here um, we're walking down A before we went to A minor now we're gonna go to A major this reminds me of like something right it's the second track on this album so A then again C G over B a, then you're into the next song. Have fun practicing, carry that weight. Be sure to check out all the other lessons that we have for this entire album so far. And again, I'm gonna leave these videos up for you on YouTube so you can check them out, come back to them and reference them and learn each song on the album. I know it's a lot of work going through each song, but what you'll start to notice is the similarities actually from song to song and kind of some of the writing ideas and chord progressions. So hopefully some things will really start to click through this lesson series for you. Before you go, don't forget to download my free book all about soloing and get the free blues training as well at the first link down below. As always, leave any comments for song requests or future album series videos that I should do. Get those in down below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to the Beatles Abbey Road series episode number 16. I can't believe that we've made it through 16 songs in a row here for this album. Today's song has a ton of guitar solo work in it and I'm gonna break down some of the main licks and show you a guitar part that will take you through the entire song. But before we dive into it, I wanna hook you up with something right away at the first link down below. I've got an exclusive guitar training series that's not on YouTube. These are some exclusive videos that come with tabs and sheet music and multiple camera angles. So it's really gonna help you out if you wanna take your playing to the next level. 
So check that out at the first link down below. And with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play the end as recorded by the Beatles on guitar. Now we're gonna start off with these unison bends and just some really cool rock licks that begin on beat four. Here's what it sounds like. One, and two, and three, and... All right, so we're gonna start out with our third finger on the 12th fret of the third string. Then we're gonna put our index finger on the 10th fret of the second string, and we're gonna bend that third finger up to match this note. This is a common like Jimi Hendrix double stop unison bend. We're gonna do that quick. We'll do a bend and then we'll choke it out by uh, just resting here with the strum hand. So that's some strum hand muting. Four and one. Then on beat one, we're gonna bend the 13th fret up to the 15th fret on the second string. So. Then we do the same thing two frets higher. So that's gonna be bending 14 on the third string and 12 just stays natural there on the second string. And then 15 on the second string. So one, two, and three, and. Then we go to this lick that's in thirds. And there's like a double here. There's another guitar that's going. Kind of doing it a higher octave of the same thing. So you can play it either way. Here I'm on the fifth fret and then the fourth fret of the sixth and fifth strings. And then you play it again. Then you move to this shape, seven and five, on those same strings and walk it up. All the way up to where your third finger's on the 11th fret, so. Then you play. And that's a little bluesy lick here. Seven on the fifth string. Nine, sliding into nine there on the sixth string. And then the fifth fret on the sixth string. So one and uh, one, it comes in on the anaphora, so four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So both those parts together, one, two and three and. Now, if you want to, you can do it here, which would be seven and six, and then up to nine and seven, and then walk that up all the way up to 13 there with your uh, third finger. Then that's the same thing, just up the octave. Okay, so we're gonna play that two times. It's once with no singing, so just the intro. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. And we got the drum fills, and then it comes in with, the, oh yeah, we do it again. Then maybe you wanna go. Okay, then we've got a big drum solo, right? That's the classic Ringo drum solo. And then we go into this. It's just a vamp where it's just an awesome kind of dueling guitar solo that sounds like this. So this is just what we call a one to four chord progression. This is an A7 on the fifth fret, five, seven, five, six, five, five, and then up to a D7. So I've relocated my index finger to the 10th fret to play 10, 12, 10, 11, 10, 10. So same chord, just moved up. And our rhythm is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. It's like what we call uh, in jazz the Charleston rhythm. One and two and three 
and four, but it's not swung. It's, it's just rock. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and 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 two, and three. Then on top of that, it's just a whole lot of guitar licks, some epic rock soloing that's pretty much all based out of your minor pentatonic scale. So if you wanted to play this rhythm into a looper pedal and then solo on top, you can play different licks based out of the minor pentatonic. I'll give you an example of that. So essentially what I'm playing there is a bunch of A minor pentatonic rock licks. And one of the ones that's on the recording is just this kind of bluesy lick where you slide in from the third fret to the fifth fret on the second string. But then you also ring out the high E with that. And then he kind of goes into like Chuck Berry, you know, this double stop here on the fifth fret. And then you've got all this. And then kind of some more rhythmic stuff like phrases like that that move up into this position of your A minor pentatonic. So all of those would be great phrases to play over this. Then out of this section, we go to just this keyboard that's just... So it's really just an A chord here. And then the end. Then you move it down to G with an A in the bass. Da, 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 da. Then F. So it's really A, then G over A, then F. And I'm using the same triad here, seven, six, five, five, and then you can just move it down, keeping the A in the bass. Then if you want, you can put your thumb on here for the F, or you can play F like this. Is equal to the, and then on love, you go to D minor seven, then G seven. So that's five, seven, five, six, and then same shape, just shifted up one string here for the G7. Three, five, three, four, three, three. And then you may. So this is the final chord progression here. You go to C, two, three, or then a D chord, but with a C in the bass. So I'm playing that D like this. And then E flat, which you can play like this, or you can do E flat bar chord. I just, I like this chord. It's kind of like what we used in something, if you checked out that lesson earlier in this series. So that's six, five, three, four, three. And then F, then C. So all that together is one, two, three, four, D over C, three, four, E flat, kind of retard, and then C. Now on top of this E flat to F to C, there's a lick that goes. And this is kind of the last little lick here. And, and what it is, is an E flat triad up here. Kind of a rake through it. And then a bend on 13. And then same thing, up one string on the second string. Then he goes to this note, which is part of the F chord here, uh, 10th fret on the second string. Then he finishes bending into the major third of the C chord. So that's the 15th fret going up a whole step on the second string. 
So if I play a little bit of the melody and then drop in that last lick over those chord changes, it would sound like this. Have fun practicing the end by the Beatles on guitar. I hope you got some value out of today's video. And again, if you get value out of my lessons here on YouTube, you're going to get a ton more value out of the free training that I have down below at the first link. Also, be sure to check out the Abbey Road series playlist that I have on my channel that has every song lesson. I'm going to be leaving these song lessons up on YouTube for you to come back to and learn any song that you want from this album. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me teach here next. Next on the channel, I'm posting a ton of song lessons and albums, entire albums. We've got Rubber Soul up on the channel, so let me know if you think I should cover an album next or a specific song in the comments below. As always, thanks for your support here on the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she changes from day to day. Wanna tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta get a belly full of wine. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, someday I'm gonna make her mine, and oh yeah, someday I'm gonna make her mine. How's it going everybody? John McLennan here and welcome to episode number 17 of the Abbey Road series. I can't believe that we made it through this entire album. And if you've been following along with me each week, I've been posting a brand new song lesson for every single song on the Beatles album, Abbey Road. It's an incredible album and it's been a lot of fun. So I hope you've got a ton of value out of these lessons. And as always, I'm gonna leave these up on YouTube so you can access them at any time. I'll leave a playlist link down below and you can always come back and learn any song or if you forgot a song, you can go back and reference it. Now today's song is called Her Majesty. It's in the key of D and it uses a very typical Beatles pattern where we just do a walk down. It's like very similar to Maxwell's Silver Hammer. We're also going to use a brushing technique that Paul McCartney also used in Blackbird. And before we dive into the lesson, if you want to improve your finger style guitar playing specifically, because this song is a finger picking song where you're doing some brushing and some strumming and pinching of the strings, I've got a free cheat sheet that you can download at the first link down below, and it's going to show you some essential finger style patterns that are really important to know, and the whole goal of this is to jumpstart your finger style playing. So if you haven't played much in this style, this is really going to help you out. So check that out at the first link down below as my gift to you, and with that said, let's break this song down. Let's break down how to play Her Majesty by the Beatles on guitar. We've got a little folk picking pattern here that's very common to Paul McCartney's style. You know, he used this sort of strumming technique in Blackbird. Now I'll play it for you first and then I'll break it down. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, one, two. Alright, so we're starting off with this descending chord progression, and this is a very common Beatles technique we've seen all throughout this album. Like, you see this in Maxwell's Silver Hammer, it's almost the same chord progression. So we're going to go D, and then have this C sharp in the bass, which is a bit of a reach, but you want to basically reach up with your pinky and play that fourth fret on the fifth string. So. Majesty's a pretty nice girl. Now here, Paul brings his thumb over, and this is uh, a really cool way of playing B minor seven. And 
Tommy Emmanuel does this a lot, actually. You bring your thumb over and you grab the second, or, or the second fret, yeah, on the fifth string there. So the bass is. Da, 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 walking down, you see? So D over C sharp, B minor seven over A. And then you just you just lift off that thumb. So the whole time you can stay in this D position, which makes it pretty comfortable. Then we go to E7, which is open, two, open, one, three, open. Then A, then D. Then we do this little walk up. So, pretty cool little chord progression there. So, D over C sharp, B minor 7 over A, E7, A, D, walk the bass. Now this pattern that I'm doing here, I'm starting with a pinch. I'm pinching the fourth string and the first string. And then I'm going down up with my index finger, nail down and flesh part of my finger up. So that's one of the patterns, one E and a. Uh, and then sometimes instead of doing the pinch when it's just like a walking bass line, he'll go thumb and then up down with the index. So the two kind of main patterns are one E and a, two E and a, see? One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So that's the first part. Then we do it again. Then we stay on E7. And then we go A with a little hammer there to the sus4. Just a little lick there. So. go to an actual B minor chord. So the first two parts go. Then B minor. Okay, so what happens here is you go B minor, then you put the F sharp in the bass by grabbing that sixth string on the second fret. So one E and a, two E and a. Then we go to B minor, add nine, and then, you know, keeping the F sharp in the bass there. So there I'm alternating B to F sharp with the bass. Tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta go to D7 next, <laughs> then G. So the next two chords here are open two, one, two, and then G. I would recommend copying my fingering here. So these are very common folk chords that we use in finger style, you know? So this would be three, two, open, 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 three. Gotta get a belly full of one. Now there's this little alternating bass with the thumb, so the bass is going sixth string, fifth string. Gotta get a belly full of sixth string, fifth string. See that thumb motion there? And here I'm going four to five. Gotta get a belly full of one. So wanna tell her that I love her a lot, but a D7 and a G with the B in the bass. Then we slide up. So this is a G, G minor six, it's classic Beatles minor four chord. 
This is a, a staple of the Beatles songwriting, and I never get sick of that sound. I love that, that chord and the way they use it in their songwriting. So G minor six, D, B minor seven, again with the thumb getting the fifth string. So. Now this is a little roundabout chord progression. It's like E minor or E minor seven, A seven, D, B minor seven. So one beat on each chord. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a see that? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a then you do it again. E minor, A seven, this time D, and then you finish with just you just hit that A string and then rest. It's like one day I'm gonna make a mine. So from the G minor six. Day I'm gonna make a mine. So the whole thing all together one more time goes like this. Three E and a four E and a Have fun practicing Her Majesty. I hope you got some value out of all these lessons. Thank you so much for following along. It's been a lot of fun. Do me a favor, leave a comment down below and let me know if I should continue this album series or what album you would like to see next. Leave it in the comments below. Also, don't forget to download my free cheat sheet all about fingerstyle guitar. So check that out at the first link down below. Thanks for your support here on the channel and until next time. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she changes from day to day. Wanna tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta get a belly full of wine. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, someday I'm gonna make her mine, oh yeah. Someday I'm gonna make her mine.